it's good to be together again, whether you are in church or listening from the comfort of your home. We all have um, a way of feeling comfortable in the service of Holy Communion, a reminder to keep one another safe, that we approach from the side aisles, sanitize, come to the steps, down the main aisle, and then repeat it on the other side. If you would like me to bring communion to your seat, then please let all the wardens know, and please be assured that there's no uh, obligation to receive the weight of the bread. It's how you feel comfortable today. So let's still ourselves as we prepare to worship Almighty God. So on this last Sunday after Trinity, also known as Bible Sunday, I welcome you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, once in another time and place, you sat at table with friends, offering them both comfort and challenge. Today, in this time and place, we too gather round a table, wanting to be close to you, to tell stories, share laughter, hear your voice, and touch hands with you. Meet with us, we pray, just as you did with them, that we may know the comfort, the challenge, and the joy of your company. I invite you to turn to your weekly sheet and to join with me in the words of the collect. My simple God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, and trust in your word and obey your word. We may enter the day of the Lord of Jesus Christ. Paul is now going to read our gospel reading. to the local cathedral bookshop 
um, carefully chose a modern translation of the Bible suitable for her grandson as a confirmation gift. She lovingly wrapped the gift at home and then took it to the post office. She placed the book, the parcel on the scales and seeing it to be quite heavy, the post office clerk said, is there anything breakable, madam? To which she replied, no, nothing breakable. And quickly added, only the Ten Commandments. <laughs> of course, the Bible contains much more than the Ten Commandments. In its pages can be found laws, history, poetry, literature, letters, dreams, biography, stories. It's a whole library. And each Sunday in church we hear a portion of the Bible. Sometimes we listen to a familiar passage, one we love to hear. But often the passages are quite challenging. Sometimes we might puzzle over the words as they're read and we might say to ourselves, this is, is this the word of the Lord? We all know that there are unhelpful ways of reading scripture, such as taking short passages out of their context to justify personal opinions or behaviour. And we have to remember that, of course, a translation, that the Bible is a translation from Hebrew and from Greek, and in some cases a translation from a translation. They are the work of men and women over several centuries, these books, attuning themselves to God as they perceived Him. But their ability to reveal the purposes of God was limited by their own cultural and national limitations. So no wonder some passages come across to our ears as cruel and heartless. Today we have to remind ourselves that Matthew was writing for an audience seeking to understand the end of time. Matthew knew how people were getting preoccupied with looking for signs, for reading signs, about when Jesus would return. The people who had worked and lived alongside Jesus were beginning to die off. Eyewitness reports about Jesus became second and third hand people's faith began to diminish. If the stories were true, when, well, where was this man called Jesus? If he was so full of love, why didn't he come back? Things had never been worse in Palestine. The chosen people were scattered, the temple had been destroyed, the promised land was a province of Rome and there was no relief in sight. He was making it clear to his audience that even Jesus did not know when the end would come. But the people still wanted guarantees about the future. He's trying to say, Matthew, never mind about the past and stop worrying about the future. Just live for the moment. He says, why don't you look at the new buds on the fig tree and watch for God's presence in the world, in your daily lives. Well, concern, anxiety about the future is something we can all relate to. Like Matthew's listeners, we delude ourselves if we think that we are in control. Too much in our lives is precarious and uncertain. These passages that we hear unfolding each week in our lives, as we engage from, with the Bible and find in them a message which shapes our lives, challenges us to change. Of course today we do give thanks for the Bible, for those who God inspired to commit the words to parchment. Uh, we give thanks for those who in early centuries deliberated over which books to include in the Bible. And we give thanks for the translators 
who in many cases suffered greatly for their work. But we also give thanks for the ready availability of the Bible today, not just in written form, but through the internet and through Bible apps on our phones. The Bible is very available, but how much do we use it? How relevant do we see the contents for our lives? Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Today, I said at the beginning, is Bible Sunday, but the Bible is not just for Sunday. I know some people here follow a daily pattern of Bible reading based on the Church of England website. Others prefer to look at a whole book um, over a period of time. Others of us struggle in how to read the Bible. We're all very different and we need to find our own way of reading, marking, learning and inwardly digesting the scriptures. May I commend to you some reading to prepare for Advent. The invitation is to take the Gospel of Mark and read it through like a novel. It's only 16 chapters, it's the shortest of the Gospels. Advent is five weeks away and on Advent Sunday we begin a new cycle of readings that will follow Mark's Gospel for the year. We all know that Christmas this year contains many unknowns, whether families can come together, how much people will be able to travel, what services can we hold in church. With all these questions and concerns, let us be encouraged to read and live out the stories of one of the Gospel writers. Don't expect to find answers about this current pandemic. Don't forget to find, don't think you can find a, a meaning behind it all. But hopefully you will discover in the reading that we are caught up in the life and the death and the suffering of Jesus in the work of God. We may not be able to understand why these things are happening, but we can be faithful agents for good in a suffering world, looking out for our neighbours, keeping in touch with those who are ill or self-isolating, listening to the bereaved, lamenting with those who are in danger of losing their jobs. None of us can see into the future, but may God grant us through his written word the courage of hope and the love which gives what it costs to pray, thy kingdom come. Amen. As we're left with some of those thoughts and just bring our own thoughts and concerns, Bill is going to play some music for us.
And we continue on our service sheets with those prayers of penitence. Your word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us. Repent of Believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. And God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <coughs> so I invite you, if you're able, to stand for the words of the crew. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, and for our sins, in the of this church, for all who have taught us the faith. Speak to us through this service words of encouragement and words of challenge. We ask your blessing on one another gathered here and all who are listening to this service in their homes as we each as individuals and as a community seek to grow in love of God and with all another. Lord, in your mercy. And in God we give thanks for all who reveal your love and care through dedicated lives. We ask your blessing on all key workers in our community shop workers, teachers, refuse collectors, all who continue their daily work for the good of everyone. We pray for those in authority, the leaders of the nations and all who make decisions and influence the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, Loving God, we give thanks for all who have shown us love and care. We ask your blessing upon our homes and loved ones. And we remember at this time all who are separated from loved ones through recent more restrictive measures. Pray especially for the lonely and any who feel unloved. Lord, in your mercy. Amen, God, we pray for all who reveal your love through working in the healing professions. We pray for doctors and nurses and remember our own doctors and hospitals. We ask your blessing on all who are ill or suffering or who mourn the loss of a loved one. Anyone who has no one to care for them, may they sense, Lord, that you are beside them. We think of people weeping on our hearts this day, but perhaps we just wish to lift to God in the silence of our hearts.
those we've been asked to name as a parish. Eileen Nolan, Peter Hodkinson, Wendy Keating, Joan Rimmer, Craig Barton, Margaret Ballantyne, Nina Norton, Val Shillington, Joanna Bloxham, Mandy Mills, Chris Macko, Marcia Cooper, Chris Rigby, Chris Wines, Calvin Hyam, Lucy Wrench, Dorothy Southern, Stephen Chadwick, Frank Highland, James Shillington, Margaret Crook. Speak to all those we have made and all who came to mind, Lord, words of comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of eternal life. We rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints and ask your blessing on all our loved ones departed. We give thanks especially for those who have recently died. For Irene Glover, Joan Edwards. Thinking too of those whose anniversaries fall around this time. Stan Jones, Mabel Penny Bold. And remembering Frank and Eileen Williams, whose ashes will be interred in this churchyard during the week. May we share with them in the fullness of your kingdom as we pray together the family prayer of the church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive for those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the Lord is the kingdom, our heart and glory, forever and ever. This is the table of our Lord, on which he sets his tokens of love and hope, and to which he calls all who want to share his love. So come, whether your faith is strong or weak, whether your hope shines brightly or is dimmed, come ready to receive. All are welcome at the feast of love. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
And now we give you thanks because you have given us the Holy Scriptures to instruct us in the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. You created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us sun and moon and starlit sky, everything that gives us light, light for our eyes, our hearts, our minds. You give us friends and families, busy streets for young and old, the life of an earthly city fulfilled in your city to come. You give us your love even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and speak your praise, saying, Holy, God of power. Thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, Send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Body and blood of Christ, keep you in eternal life.
And I invite you to join with me in that post-communion prayer on our weekly sheet. God of all the Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit with the prayer of his life, and the word of his name, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living prayer, which is our life.
uh, in church and we'll be able to leave those up until the usual time and take them down after Christmas. Um, that's good news, I think, that we can do that in the midst of all the other uh, difficulties. Um, Anne has made some scarecrows, uh, not like the ones outside the church door, they're more like dolls. In fact, I didn't mean to bring one up, it's uh, lying on the floor, I've been looking at it during the service. If you'd like one, uh, then I'm sure... No, 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 Alan. There's only one scarecrow left. Oh, right. <laughs> all, all, all the other toys that I made for the Christmas fair, I can fetch next week. I will bring them in tomorrow so that they can be left untouched for a week. If anybody wants one, I'm afraid if you touch it, you've bought it. <laughs> so so we'll, I'll spread them out so that they are, you know, you can see them. But it, right, it, can it, I relay that to everybody in case it didn't pick it up on the, the, the other mic? Um, and there is one scarecrow left, I'm sure you can negotiate with Anne for the price of that. She's been having <laughs> a good morning. Um, the other toys that she's knit, as has been knitting all year for the Christmas fair, that isn't going to happen. You can buy those and she'll bring them into church so they will be untouched by human or Anne's hand for a week. And they will say for you to buy next week. Right, uh, one other thing. Tomorrow is the PCC meeting, a special PCC meeting, and the annual parish uh, church meeting. Uh, that's at 7.30. Could any PCC members please hang on after the service, and I've got uh, lots of paperwork for you. So it's been sanitised, and I'd be grateful if you could pick that up, and then we'll know who I've got to give the rest out to. I think that's all, no doubt somebody else will have something. Silence is golden. Thank you. <laughs> Thing to add actually about the 9.30 service for remembrance. It's exactly a hundred years ago this weekend that the Bishop of Liverpool came to dedicate our war memorial. I know the date says June 1920, but he actually dedicated it and there's a new booklet out and so the 9.30 service will be uh, a remembrance service built into the Eucharist service. Blessing is printed on our service sheet and it's taken from the Old Testament from the Book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Before I say the final words, I remind you that it's um, good to listen and um, just take stock before we leave as we listen to Bill playing. So let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.